All right, welcome everyone, axe throwers especially. Um, all of you guys are probably really bored inside right now and that, uh, that depression is really starting to kick in. So if you have the means um, and the space, today we're gonna show you how to build an outside axe target, axe target building 101. So we've taken the liberty of pre-cutting some materials and getting some equipment and tools together so you guys can be uh, exempt from the less boring part of this. But some of the tools you're gonna need to build an outdoor axe throwing target and this one does not have a stand. This is a permanent base in the ground. So it's easy to cut the grass around. It doesn't kill the grass. It does not move, but it's also easier to take apart. You can just remove these boards and just be left with the two posts. For the winter time, if you're not throwing, we're here in New Jersey. It's cold for about four or five months out of the year. So it's not very pleasant to throw axis outside. So um, some of the equipment you're gonna need for today, I have two four by four by 10 foot long exterior grade posts we're going to sink these into the ground here um, they're going to go exactly four feet apart yeah our target dimensions are four feet to the outside so from this space here to this space here is four feet so we're going to want to sink those posts four foot outside diameter um, we have our boards obviously we've gone ahead and we've pre-painted these boards this target's actually from last year has been used in a couple months so we're going to use these boards as our footer and our header for our new target which is going to go right over there so we got our new boards over here we got our posts we got our this is a piece of four by four three inch i'm sorry three quarter uh, plywood it's cut out of a four by eight sheet it's exactly half of that sheet it's three quarter because this is the spec for ietf targets it's also going to help with your uh with your rigidity in the back and you know absorbing the axe throws especially if you're doing big axe outside um, exterior grade would be good if you don't have it plywood tends to hold up pretty well and you can always replace it at the end of the season uh, you're also going to need a level we got some spray paint for our holes in the ground. We got a tape measure. We got some exterior screws. We got a mallet for setting posts, obviously a pencil and our drill. So we got some supports out here in our crit creed as well. Uh, what we're gonna do first is we gotta figure out where our posts are gonna go. So we already have one target. You guys can get a pretty good idea of what it's gonna look like. We're gonna move this other one two feet over. So we're actually gonna measure two feet for our holes from the center, or you can just go four foot wide across if you don't really care where it's going. We're gonna try and line this up with the other ones. So both throwers um, are throwing at the same target with the same dimensions. So what you wanna do is you wanna measure four feet across with your tape measure, and you're gonna to wanna to get your point in the middle of your hole. This way you have big enough room. You can move these posts around a little bit before you set them in the concrete, make sure everything's nice and level, and it's gonna support your backboard when you go to install it later. So we're gonna excavate these holes and we'll be back in a minute. All right, everybody, we're back. Our holes are dug. A um, Couple things I should have mentioned before we decide to do that. If you guys live in a rural area, something you wanna take into account before you dig your holes is where your irrigation system is and any low voltage wire that would be in the ground. As you can see, we very easily could have gone right through that with our, uh, our trusty post hole digger over here without even knowing about it and then you got a lot of extra repairs to deal with so try and avoid that if you can um, other than that just some uh, discussion about difference between outdoor targets and indoor targets most of you that are watching this are probably experienced throwers you'll notice that in our arenas for safety we have backboards here that run all the way down uh, those are to protect from bounce back and to protect the wall of the facility um, outside if you're a beginner, you might want to put those up because you don't want to lose your axe in the dirt. Um, but if not, I think you can you can save yourself the cost on the lumber and not put those in. Um, what you're going to concentrate on are these five boards here. We got our two outside boards. We got a left clutch. I'm sorry, left clutch, a right clutch, our bullseye. I have a little uh, header up here just to protect from big axe. And when you go for clutch, you get to the top of the board. And then we have one at the bottom there to support our backboard and our, our target itself. And, uh, you know, you have a, a couple beers. Sometimes you throw it a little low. This will prevent it from uh, ending up in the woods or your neighbor's yard or in a car or something else. So for those of you that don't have access to these giant boards right here, um, I can suggest trying to brace your target between two other objects. If you had a tree or something here um you know some kind of a a, a post or even a, a like a, a barn or something with a support in the corner you could anchor to that you could do one post or if you have trees you could run the span between the two um, you could use two by sixes which are essentially a little skinnier version of this right here it's going to be about that wide uh, you'd nail them together two of them you'd run them horizontally this way 
and then you should you could secure your target to that you might get a little more bounce back um, you could actually support it from the back with a two by four maybe pushing against the backboard but um, not everybody has the ability to move around a 10 foot long four x four so uh, just another option for you there um, so we're going to come over here you see we dug our holes they are just to the outside of the hole there and you're going to come over you're going to see the four foot mark just to the outside there so when we set these in concrete we can prop them up and we'll have exactly four feet from outside to outside so we're going to uh we're going to put these posts in the ground we're going to get them set up and then uh, we'll be back in a second we'll explain to you guys how to put concrete in and how to brace them all right so our posts are upright uh, we have our holes dug uh, these holes here in new jersey we have a frost line so we got to go down below 36 inches on type a for your uh purposes of your target you might not have to do that if they heave out of the ground a little bit it's not going to be a big deal but i went down below the frost line so we could set those um posted concrete so they're here permanently they won't move um what we did was we measured to make sure we got outside diameter it's going to be four feet apart exactly and actually you can line this up with your backboard so you can use that once these are set you can move these tops in a little bit they'll bend a little bit um you'll notice that these markings that we have are a little higher than this target the area behind us is kind of on a slope so you want to make sure that the center of your bullseye is exactly 63 inches from the ground so then you have your board height four by four so we got our bullseye line here we transferred it onto the pole now the ground right here we used the level to give ourselves a nice level surface we'll split the difference and we'll call you know the, we'll, we'll take middle from 63 so it's going to be a little less on the left hand side a little more on the right hand side it's actually reversed because we're on camera here so we got our bullseye markers wrap both sides it'll make your life easier later so you can see what's going on we're going to go 24 inches down from our bullseye because that's the center of our bullseye to the bottom of our target board so we got 24 inches here and then we're going to measure down nine and a quarter inches so we use two by tens two by tens a nominal measurement uh two by tens are actually about nine and a quarter nine and an eight somewhere in there so um, we put these markings here this will serve as the bottom of our footer that's what's going to support our target so when we hang that up we'll bring this level up here we're going to level that board and then we can assemble the rest of our target before we do that we got to sink these posts in concrete so the most important thing is to make sure that you have a nice square target set up that's obviously really hard to do when you're out in the middle of nowhere there's nothing to pull a square line off of so um what you can do is you can take a two by four any kind of spare piece of wood anything you have you put a point on the bottom set it in the ground that's going to be what we call a brace so you're going to set that up so you can check both sides make sure you're level yep wind's blowing a little bit out here but we're still good yep we're good there and we're good there so we have uh bags of 50 pound quick reach to do it so we'll use this probably about one and a half bags total for both we're going to go all the way down you only want to come up to about four or five inches below the surface because you want to be able to put dirt back on top of that and grow grass later you don't want cement on top so we're going to pour that in probably takes about 20 minutes to set up after we get our target set we'll come back so um, just remember again you're going to use this as your bottom measurement right here you're going to work your target up if you feel that you need those bottom boards uh, you can secure those later take them down as close to the bottom as you want but this is the set measurement height that you want to use for the start of your target um, in the words of joe perry you don't need these if you just throw better so if you guys are comfortable and like i said you don't want to have your axe in the dirt or anything like that going underneath ending up in the woods especially at night then you might want to put those boards on the bottom same thing for the top you can take this up higher you don't want to throw over the board so but if you guys have been throwing for a while i feel that uh you're probably have enough skill to be able to get the target consistently if anything it's going to drop right in front you just want to get yourself a little mat um i have one of those around here we'll show that in the next segment put down the grass it'll protect the grass it'll protect your axe and you can remove it when you're not using it so it doesn't kill the area and make a mud pit anything like that outside so we're going to put the concrete in the holes i'm going to go get a drink we'll give the time to set up and we'll be back all right hey everyone we're back um cheers beer clock or mimosa clock in this case so we've uh we've set our concrete pretty good nice and sturdy there um we took the liberty of putting in the bottom board remember we went from our bullseye line 24 down measure from the top of the board nine and a quarter inches down from there and this is where you're going to set your board take your level make sure that guy's level and that's going to use as the base to set your backboard so 
Um, we put this in here too to support this while the concrete was going in. It's not a bad idea. This will keep the post from shifting this way and this way to make sure that you're still four feet apart when your concrete dries. There's nothing worse than setting these seeds in concrete, kid hits it, windy day, something you come out and your boards are, you know, six inches out of whack and you can't separate it. The only bad thing about an outdoor target is generally there's not a lot of support in the middle. Um, it requires a lot of extra lumber. So when you're hitting the board, there's a lot of force on the middle. What you can do is you can take some two by fours you can secure them there and there up top and that'll give you a little more rigidity to the back or you can just uh, throw away and plan on having to replace your backboard at the end of every season so um, generally if your backboards get a little more give this way it's going to crack and break you're going to have a hard time securing your targets things like that so a little extra bracing goes a long way um, we're going to leave our supports on for now just because they don't need to be taken off at the moment we'll put this down move our backboard over we got our screws so we're just using uh, two and a half inch exterior decking screws are good for outside they have a t25 bit they will uh, they'll come out easy they'll go in easy they weather well drywall screws tend to rust they're gonna snap off they get stuck in boards these guys will last you a little longer a little more expensive but uh, definitely worth the money so uh, put this down let's get this guy up here get these off too get your backboard ready all right get this guy up sit nice and level there make sure you got no burrs or wood or 